uh, yeah, let's start with the Cleopatra album, of course. It's uh, basically a, a debut album for Everdone. So what can you tell me about this album? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's been a long time in the making. Um, it's, uh, you know, where we're at as a band right now. Uh, I think from a song perspective, I think it's a pretty cohesive batch of songs. I think from a production standpoint, I think it's got a, a nice modern production polish to it. And I think, you know, fans of, you know, Nightwish, Epica, Delane, I think can have another avenue to go listen to that's not cookie cutter it's not the same exact stuff but it's in the same kind of vein that i think a lot of people can can definitely get into um and i think i think there's different types of songs for everybody to kind of attach themselves to i think okay uh you said that it was done in a long period of time so how was the writing and recording for this record well, I mean, we started working on this, um, you know, back in like 2016, 2017, when we were under the, uh, the Midnight Eternal uh, moniker. And so there was a lot of delays with that. And when we parted ways with our former singer and had to start anew, uh, that took some time as well. But the recording didn't take, you know, we, we did the recording in 2019 and basically finished the album recording mixing mastering at the end of 2019 and so then there was time to find a label to um put it out and then once we signed with sensory records in march of 2020 is when everything kind of you know hit a standstill with the uh lockdowns and the pandemic really took an effect so that's why it's been a long time in the making so it's it, it was a it was a great kind of feeling to finally put the album out last uh this past friday so you know yeah, how is it to put out music in a time like this when you can't really go touring on it? I mean, normally it probably would not be the most ideal time, but uh, again, we felt like there's been so much time since the, the self-titled Midnight Eternal album that we were on. And um, there's only so much you can post on social media without uh, actually giving people music to listen to. So um you know we needed we 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 felt like we we needed to release this album anyway you know even if we're not going to be able to tour for quite a while uh we needed you know again albums today really are almost more of just like you know a you know a way of letting people know what your music sounds like and stuff and then you know the touring and everything else is really where you know everything else comes together but again people didn't really have a clue as to you know what our new singer would sound like and what our material is going to sound like so we 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 knew we needed to put this out so yeah uh if we don't uh uh look at the sing uh, of course that's a big part when the singer changes but what are the other changes in your music since 2016 and midnight eternal Uh, well, um, I think one of the big, another big one was we got um, Mike LaPond back in the band, who actually was the original bass player and played on the first two songs for Midnight Eternal. So that was a, uh, it was a nice, uh, a nice uh, addition. Again, his bass playing, you know, speaks for itself with Symphony X and all the projects he's done. And uh, I think it adds another dimension to the music. You know, I mean, again, bass, a lot of times is, you know, a second thought. It's kind of just like, you know, just throw it on there, double the guitar parts and, you know, be done with it. But, you know, Mike has a, he has a, you know, I, you know, I don't want to say an old school approach, but, you know, his playing is very melodic and he's not always doing the exact same thing the guitars are doing. He's adding something else to the music. So I think it's a, you know, I think it's a definite bonus, you know. So we're really happy that uh, with what he came up with for the album. Okay. And uh, how was it for the band to bounce back kind of from the uh 2016 uh uh well you changed the name and uh and your uh, singers changed so uh uh well how how do you see that whole whole situation because it's been reported uh, being a bit messy yeah i mean um we wanted to continue as midnight eternal but our former singer locked us out of all our social medias and we tried launching some new pages, but because of the fact that the 
original Midnight Eternal page was like a verified Facebook account and had like a blue check mark or whatever. They kept shutting down our new pages. And, you know, we, we tried to, you know, because, you know, uh, Boris started the our keyboard player, started the Facebook page in the in the beginning anyway. But, you know, Facebook just didn't do anything for us. And again, we wanted to focus on music. And rather than spend money on lawyers and all this stuff, we were like, you know, we want to put music out there. This isn't what we want to do. So we were like, let's just come up with a new name uh, and, you know, venture forward. And, and, you know, because again, by the time, you know, we had done, you know, the album came out in 2016 for Midnight Eternal and we had done a tour with Queensryche in 2016. And then we did a tour in 2018 with Therion in Europe. And, you know, by the time all that, kind of stuff was done a lot of the momentum of the band and petered out i think in my opinion so you know it was just like all right well let's just start anew and uh you know once you know um you know we decided all that you know we were able to take on alina from another project and we you know we sent her some songs to put her vocals to um as like an online audition and then we invited her to new jersey where we're at and we had, you know, a jam session with the songs and it just really felt good. It was like we knew her. It felt like we knew her for a long time. And I think now that, you know, we've done the album and people have heard it and people are really, you know, enjoying the vocals. I, I think we've definitely made the right decision. And I think we're, you know, the reviews have been very positive and we're really happy with what, what's going on right now. So. Yeah. Yeah. How did it all come together? I mean, with the guests on the album and Dan Svano and. How did it all come together for you? Okay, uh, well, with regards to um, Thomas Wickstrom, who uh, lent his vocals on uh, Your Majesty's Sadness, uh, when we had done the tour under you know the Midnight Eternal banner with Therion back in 2018, our drummer had become pretty friendly with Thomas, and they were you know hanging out in some of the you know like some of the shows and. Um, you know, our drummer is very good at networking and he's a good people person. So it's good, a good thing to have. And, you know, um, he just kept in touch with them, you know, after the tour was done. And, um, we had demoed us the song, your majesty sadness. I had done the, the male vocal on in the demo and we were thinking about having a, uh, a guest singer. And that was really the only song that really kind of made sense for it. And so we had our drummer, Dan reach out to Thomas and he said, yeah, we wanted to do it. So we sent him the song. He recorded uh, his vocals in Spain, I believe, where he lives, and uh, sent it back, and it sounded great. And um, that was basically how his contribution came about. And then again, um, our drummer had done a kind of melodic death metal project, I think back in 2012 or something like that. And Dan Swano had mixed and mastered that. And you know, um, we knew we wanted to kind of step up the production uh, of this album compared to the, the Midnight Eternal self-titled. So we uh, again we um our drummer was like let's let's ask dan swano if he's available and if he, he wants to do it and again we reached out to him and he said yes you know he he was very interested because he, he doesn't do a lot of melodic bands and he was very interested in kind of you know you know because a lot of the stuff he grew up listening to was kind of adult oriented rock and melodic things and so he was very uh, very eager to work on it and i think he did a, a great job and i think you know, I think it's a great balance of guitars and keys. I, I think usually it's either one or the other. I think there's a good balance in where the guitars shine and where the keyboards come through. I, I yeah, he just did a great job. And then, you know, of course, everything else, the, just the, the drums and the vocals and everything. So uh, we're really happy with what he did for the album. Really nice mo modern sound, so. Yeah, uh, what I always loved in power metal is the escapism of it all. So. Uh, where does the inspiration come from for your music and lyrics too? Uh, I mean, you know, uh, I'm just speaking for myself. I mean, I think, you know, it's tough. I, you know, I think a lot of the songs have, you know, have a lot of subject matter that's has to, you know, on a, a personal level, has to deal with personal struggles of, you know, um, being torn between good and evil and things like that. but it's veiled in a way of, of, of kind of, you know, like stranded in Bangalore. It's put in, the, in this uh, setting of India and 
Bangalore as kind of the kind of backdrop to it. So, uh, you know, it's tough. I would, you know, it, it's tough to say where these ideas come from. And I think probably our keyboard player would probably have a little more, he, he's, he's more heavily to do with the lyrics and stuff as, as well as our singer. I mean, there's one, you know, again, and then there's a song, the last Eden, which has to deal with the, um, which is the ending song on the album, which is about the environment and how, you know, we you know, so this is the only planet we have and, you know, we're kind of, you know, destroying it. And, you know, it's a, again, everybody can kind of, uh, um, you know, understand and, um, uh, you know, it touches on, you know, things that people can, uh, uh relate to, I guess is, and then again, veiled in kind of, um, fantasy and, and things like that. So, um, but I wouldn't say our music is just straight up power metal. I mean, definitely a little bit more more on on that edge of things now with the Everdawn thing compared to the Midnight and Eternal stuff. But I, I you know, I, I mean, we all, you know, you know, Stradivarius and Blind Guardian and things like that are definitely big influences, and um, as well as Camelot and things like that. So yeah, you know, it, you know, we've all listened to those things, and you know, it's it's hard not to kind of sometimes wear your influences on your sleeve. But I think. I don't want to say it's exactly the same kind of thing, but, you know, I think it, it, again, gives listeners, you know, something familiar, but something different at the same time. So. Yeah. You maybe already have some, some new material coming, coming to. So uh, what kind of direction are you taking musically uh, from now on? Um, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, we, we've got about like 20 ideas we're working with and we really want to, you know, hopefully record, record this new material sometime this year. Uh, I think it's just, you know, I think it's the next step for what we're doing. Um, you know, I'm experimenting a little bit, uh, you know, because uh, I, there might be some seven string guitar on it. Um, you know, it's kind of early to say, because there's a lot of songs and they're not all going to make the album. Uh, but, you know, we're really excited. There's a, there's a long Epic song we're working on that that's, I think once it's, you know, put together and mixed and mastered, it's going to take the listener on a journey. It's a really cool song. And, um, you know, some of the newer songs that we've been working on, are just, it's just getting better and better. So it, it's definitely, you know, going down the path of the symphonic power metal thing, but again, it's, it's a little early to say, and I, you know, uh, and again, you know, I know some, I've heard some things about, you know, is it going to be hard to, you know, write and come out with another album without really doing any touring and, you know, seeing what the reaction is uh, from people. But again, I, we don't want to wait too long and, you know, we want to, um, we want to just kind of keep the momentum going. I mean, again, some of the best bands from all the, you know, from all time, you know, you think of the eighties of Dio, he was releasing albums almost every year, Iron Maiden, releasing, you know, in the eighties, you know, 80, 81, 82, 83. So we, you know, we want to, we want to keep the, we want to be prof prolific, I guess is the way, the best way to say, and just kind of keep, keep things moving. You know, I don't know if we'd be able to do it every year, but you know, every two years or something like that, we don't want to wait as long as we did from the midnight eternal album to this one. We want to, we want to keep it going. So. <laughs> 